Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a very realistic ocean in Blender. There will be foam that lays on top of the water's surface. And I'll also be showing you how to make the ocean loop, which basically means that when the timeline cuts from 250 back to 1 or whatever your end frames are, the ocean will stay smooth and it will look like it's fluid just going through a infinite motion instead of like clipping and looking really weird i will also just kind of show you at the end how you can kind of make a sunset and how light will reflect off of it but without further ado let's jump into it so first we are going to select the camera and light right click and hit delete if you're having troubles understanding like what button is to press you can always look down at the bottom right corner here and there was this button press also as you see if I hit left it'll say it and it'll also do it with the keys I press like shift A to bring it up so if that helps anybody then you can always be looking at that. Um we're then going to select the cube and then go to modifiers and hit add modifier and we're going to add the ocean modifier. Right as we add that our cube will instantly turn into a ocean which is pretty cool. And now we're just going to kind of tinkle with the options we have here. So I'm going to change the resolution viewport to 10. So you can see it becomes a little more detailed, you have a little more bumps. And the render to 30. You're going to change this up or down depending on what your computer can handle. Um, and we're all, we're all going to change the resolution viewport to 30 just like the render. But the reason why we're not doing that right now is so that we can easily jump through the timeline because if we change it to 30 um it's much harder for the computer to render all that i'm then going to keyframe the time at frame one and then go to the end and then i'm going to add another 10 to the time so that'd be 11 and i'm gonna keyframe it there i'm also then going to open the waves and i'm going to change the scale to 1.5 and then i'm going to turn on foam and make the data layer just lowercase foam here, and then make the coverage minus 0.4, so minus 0 0.4, however, however you want to type it. I'm then going to come down here to the timeline and hit Shadow Editor, and now we're going to kind of mess around with the material to make it look way more like, well, water, because water isn't white. Uh, in order to see this, I'm going to go into the actual viewport shading where you can actually see the colors. I'm going to make the base color just kind of a darker blue, I'm going to add in a mix shader right in between. So that way the BSDF comes in the shader and then cut and then goes into the mix shader and comes out here and then goes into the material output surface. I'm then going to bring in a attribute, which will actually just be right there. I'm gonna change the name to the name right here that we typed in. So lowercase foam for me. You could have done whatever though. Put the color into the factor here. And then hit Shift A and make the other shadow here emission. So as you can see, if we remove the principal BSDF, you can actually see all these white parts is where the foam will appear. And it's kind of where the water rises up and kind of where the water is going to hit each other. So as you can see, now if we go into rendered mode, it looks pretty good. And so now we can make it loop. And in order to make a loop, it's actually really easy. I'm just going to head back to our timeline. And then we're going to want to pull down this arrow right next to the ocean at the top here. And I'm going to hit duplicate. Then you're going to come down to the ocean or the new ocean um, modifier you just made. And change it from geometry generate to geometry displace. This is very important. We're then going to want to make sure that wherever our time left off at frame 250... That's where we're going to start it at 0 for a new one. So at 1, we are going to keyframe it at 11. And then we're going to go to the end and we're going to keyframe it at 22. So just double it, whatever you had. We're kind of going to do the same thing with scale. But for the first one, we're going to start off the scale at 0. So scale at 0. And then at the end here, we are going to change it to 1.5. So we had it at before. And do the opposite for this one. So keyframe this one at 0 at the end. And at the beginning, 
1.5. Another really important step is with all of the keyframes, you want to hit A, right click, go into pollution mode, make it linear. This way, um, the fluid and the ocean kind of has the same um, speed and movement all the way through, whereas where it was, it was set to bezier before, which starts off slow and goes faster, but that's not how water is. So now if we go into the um, uh, viewport shading, just the white one, we can actually play it. It'll, all, it'll start off at a nice speed, it'll kind of continue at that. And if we go to the end here, you can see it perfectly loops. So that's what we're kind of looking for. Um, we can now change both of the resolution viewports to 30. So let's hit 30 here. And 30 right down here. And so now you can see it's way more bumpy and way more realistic. If we go to viewport shading, see it has we have some really nice um ripples in the water. And now we're going to add in a sun so I can just kind of show you how the sun reflects off the water and how it looks very nice. So I'm just gonna bring in a UV sphere, size that up a bit, move it back on X. Let's kind of look on flat here. Move it up on Z a little bit. Go to materials, add in a new material. Change the surface to emission. I'm gonna make the strength around 20. Uh, that should be good. And then make it kind of an a orange. But as you can see, it's not really reflecting off of the water. This is because we're an Eevee. And Eevee is really bad at reflections, like mirrors and everything. And so, unfortunately, the water will only work in cycles. So you will be having to use cycles, but as you can see now we have this beautiful reflection in the water, and it's really nice. I'm just going to change it to GPU. Some computers are able to, some are not, and then I'm going to change the max samples on both here to 64. So as you can see, now we have a really nice sunset. The sun is bouncing off the water just like how we want, and it's looking really realistic. But the sun doesn't really glow, and it's a little bit too round. So in order to fix this, we're going to go to compositing, um, turn on use nodes, pull the render layers over, and hit shift a right in between, and we're going to add in the glare node. We're then going to change this to the glow, and then change the size to 7, but you can always change it up and down depending on how big you want it. And now if we set up a camera here, so let's go camera... The reflections on the water and the sun will actually glow. So as you can see, we have this really nice glowing aura around the sun and a pretty nice looking sunset. And you can always add a background here to make it look really nice and the sun will emit light on the background and it will look very beautiful. Um, uh, that's all I'm going to be showing you today. If you like the video, you can always leave a like and subscribe. And if you like to see anything else, you can always leave it down in the comments. And in order to see stuff new right as I post it, you can always turn on the no notification bell. I hope you have a nice day, and I can't wait to see you until next time. Bye!